stand up for humanity and when you say I love you Lord you're in turn saying I love the things that you love I love humanity so keep that in your consciousness as we
Hi, Karen here, standing for humanity. Join us, a team of folks who are committed to the humanity of this world, on November 3rd at the Reflecting Pool at the Lincoln Memorial. Under the guidance of Sylvia E. Sumter, Senior Minister, join us in all faiths, races, beliefs, as we stand up for humanity. Hashtag stand up for humanity. Good morning, beloved ones. Turn to someone and tell them, I see your glorious light. I see your glorious light. I see your glorious light. And I see your glorious light. Yeah. I wish you could always see what I see when I stand up here and I have the blessed and sacred opportunity to look out upon you. You who are so faithful and committed. You who come into this place with willing hearts and minds. You who come in ready to do your part, to shine brightly, to offer you know, the highest and the best of who you are to each other. This is a special place in my book because people who come into this place feel the vibration that we create. They actually feel the energy that exists here. And I know that it's true because there'll be strangers who have never come before, but when they enter into this place, they always tell me, wow, it feels so good here. There's something special here. And all I say is, yes, yes. So I just want to thank you this morning. I want to uh, acknowledge you and to let you know how grateful I am to be able to be here as a servant of God and of this sacred community. So I just felt like sharing that this morning with all of you because it was coming from my heart and my soul. So, from the limited to the limitless. From the limited to the limitless. I was watching uh, TV a little bit last night before I was working on my message for this morning and there was a commercial that came on and I don't even know what they were trying to sell. I, I, I really don't. But I remembered the tagline because when I heard the tagline it was something that resonated with me and I thought it was powerful and that it was perfectly in alignment with the message I wanted to bring this morning. So you know we have this selective hearing, right? Because I didn't hear anything else about the commercial. I don't know what they were talking about. When I heard that tagline, it was like, because you recognize truth when you hear it, right? So all of a sudden, I heard that tagline, and I was like, wow, yes. And it was very simple. It said this. The tagline was, being small isn't the problem. Thinking small is. And I was like, what, what? I don't know what they were talking about, but the moment I heard that phrase, because see, my, my whole being is attuned to truth. So when I hear it, or when I feel it, or somebody expresses something, there's like a, uh, uh, something goes off in my being. And I looked up and I said, what? Yes. Being small isn't the problem. And I don't know what they were talking about, what was small. But I got it. You know, sometimes we think, well, I'm just small, it's just me, I'm just one man, one person. Being small isn't the problem. Thinking small is. How many of us can honestly say that we have truly lived up to our potential? That we have lived out loud 
You know, people are always texting, laughing out loud. Well, forget that. Have you lived out loud? Loud enough so that others can see your life, right? Have you actually reached far beyond your own wildest dreams? Never having played small. Can we say that? I was in a reflective mode this, 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 this week, and I had been for a, a minute, but I had two, two uh, services this week. I had a funeral with Bonnie, Bonnie Branch, and then yesterday we had a beautiful, powerful uh, memorial service for Clipper. And I love the picture. I wanted to show you all. Come up and take, this, take a look when you can at the end of the service, and you'll see. Remember Clipper? Mr. Dapper Dan. Anyway, I'm keeping him up here because his spirit is with me this morning. But I had, you know, uh, 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 a funeral, Bonnie Branch, and I had just four months earlier done her husband's service, and he unexpectedly became ill and passed away rather quickly. And four months later, she followed behind him. And whenever I have uh, or do a service like a funeral, a memorial service, or, or a service that speaks to the end of an individual's life expression on the physical plane, because we know life doesn't end, but whenever I'm doing a service for a soul whose physical expression has ended, I find myself reflecting upon my own life. And it happens often, because I do, you know, I do several services. And so I find myself reflecting upon my own life, and I usually end up feeling like I haven't done enough. I haven't done enough with my life, or I didn't quite live up. I'm not living up to my highest potential. Um, uh, that there's, there's something more that I can express. And I end up reviewing all the things maybe that I didn't do or, or, or the things or how I haven't shown up like I wanted to show up with my heart wide open, just loving everybody and being my, my wonderful grand self, you know. And, and I, all of a sudden I'm focusing on there's more. I'm not really expressing all that I know that lies within me, that I'm somehow hiding my light under a bushel, hiding my light under a basket, as some scriptures say. And Jesus, in Mark 4.21, asked the very powerful question. He says, well, would anyone light a lamp and then put it under a basket or a bed? And he says, of course not. A lamp is placed on a stand where its light will shine. He also said, of course, the familiar scripture, that we are the light of the world. So with that being true, why would we hide our light? Why would we not shine brightly, so brightly, that others could see our light, right, and then be reminded of how great God is, how good God is. Because in another scripture, he actually tells us, he says, let your light so shine before men that they might see your good works, but what? And glorify God. So I take that to mean that when we are really, truly living our lives to our highest and fullest potential, when we're really doing that, then that means that God must be doing some pretty amazing things in our lives. Because it's, you shine, but it's the glory goes to where? To God, right? That your light so shine that they can see your works. You're doing something now. But the glory is going to God, meaning that God must be doing one heck of a job in your life. But bringing you blessings that are so great that when other people look at you and when they look at your life or when they look at what, what you're doing, that they have no other choice to say, ooh, that ain't nothing but God. Right? When you are living to that degree, 
when people look at you and you see your good works, the thing that they, the good works are so stupendous, so they have to say, "Wow, that soul is truly anointed by God." Must be look at the blessings of God, because they know that it's so great that it's something that you, in your own little bit of finite sense of self, could not do. That it had to be the workings of God in and through and as you unfolding in such a way that God has to get the glory. That's when you know we're kind of, you're living your fullest and highest potential. Right? Our light would be so bright that people will be blinded by our blessings. Don't you want to live where people are blinded by your blessings? That is, ooh, ooh, that stuff is, the goodness of God is so great in their life, woo. That's the way I want to live. So the question is, are you playing small? And I can answer for, for the majority, I won't answer and say everybody, but I'm, I know I'm pretty doggone close. Most of us are playing small, if not all, right? So, so, so are you playing small? Are you hiding your light under a bushel, under a basket? Well, I'm going to say this. Now is not the time for that. Because this is the time to live large. And when I say live large, I'm not talking about living large in terms of acquiring or amassing a lot of uh, material gains. You know how the young folks say, oh, they're living large. I'm not talking about that. That will happen naturally, okay? But I'm talking about living large where you are gaining and expressing lots of the spiritual stuff, not the material stuff, but the spiritual stuff, the stuff that you're truly made of, the stuff of God in you, through you, and as you. See, it's time for us to move, and I'm speaking to myself because this is what Spirit keeps saying, you got to open up, get up, get out, do this work. This is lovely, these are your people, this is great, but this is something greater that's happening out here that we all must move out. We all must shine out. We all must do bigger and greater things because greater is he, what that is in me, than is he that's in the world and the greater that's in us is shouting, it's time, it's time. So, you know, it's time to move beyond the limited to the limitless to move beyond all of our self-imposed limitations. Because we all have things, well, I can't do this because of that, but it's a self-imposed limitation, right? Because if we're gonna move into the limitless, then it's going to take a different mindset. If you really wanna shine, or you really want to let the divine fully be expressed in you and through you and in your life and in your affairs and in your situations, in your circumstances, in your conditions, if you really want the divine to do that, then you're going to have to move beyond your comfort zone, beyond the familiar, familiar forms or ways in which you've used to express. Well, I'm used to, this is the way that I am, I'm used to being this way, I'm quite comfortable being Sylvia. Right? Well, maybe not all the time even. We think we're comfortable being ourselves, but it's a limited, finite definition that I even hold of myself. So we've got to be comfortable in moving out of that, of how you did things in the past, or what, how you expressed normally, because things ain't normal right now. It's a whole different vibration that's happening on the planet. And we got to move into it, because we've been called for such a time as this. We're amping our spiritual wattage, right? You can't be a 15-watt bulb anymore because 150 watts of energy and power are being unleashed in and through you. So, so this is a different, a different mindset. This is a new day, and it requires a new level of understanding on our part. And we're all being, you know, in, we're all being sort of broken away. I know things have are changing in our individual lives and stripped away and what, what's happening? There's a lot of that going on, that's okay. I have to keep telling myself it's part of the process. It's all right, trust, right? 
Trust in me. Trust in God. All right, so it's part of the process. But this is a new day. And if you really want to be able to do the miraculous, the outstanding, the stupendous, because that's what's being required right now, right? is energy that performs and does the miraculous and the outstanding, or maybe even if you want to be able to do the simple things that will enable you to simply flow with grace and ease. Okay, that's, that's good too. Either way, we're going to have to somehow spend more time touching this realm, the realm of the limitless, infinite presence of God and the presence of possibilities. We're going to have to move beyond what we have previously thought was possible into believing in the impossible. We've got to do that because with God, we know that what? All things are possible. Turn to somebody and tell them it's possible. Or tell them like you mean it. It's possible. Each of us are trying to do something in our lives that we might be hesitating, thinking about. It's possible. So first get that in your consciousness and in your mind. It's possible. So if we, re if we simply rely upon our limited, finite minds, we won't get very far. Because we now have to be even more willing to stretch our consciousness so that we can begin to lay hold of things that we think are beyond us or beyond our capabilities. Remember, being small isn't the problem. What is? Thinking is. Thinking is. So this is about us stretching our consciousness. And it's not going to be comfortable. I'm stretching in ways that I'm doing something that I've not done before and how I, but I'm stretching in ways and it's not comfortable and there's some things that come in, but I know that it's necessary and I know that it's powerful. So I have to, I'm trying to train myself now to have a willing mind and a willing heart and a trusting heart that trust in God. I trust in God that there's something that God is moving me too and through. There's something that God is moving you to and through. So do me a favor. Let's, let, how about training your consciousness with thoughts like this? So just close your eyes for a moment and I want you to be able to, to uh, not just hear these words because hearing is a mechanical thing. I want you to be able to listen, meaning you're imparting some kind of understanding and wisdom. So just breathe gently for a minute and hold these thoughts. God, this is bigger than me. I need the vastness of your power. For with you, anything is possible. I surrender my fears and false beliefs and I open myself up to miraculous possibilities that lie within your being. Place in my consciousness the vision of what can be and touch my heart, my mind, my hands, and my feet so that I am compelled to move with the vision. Let me be filled with complete faith in you, trusting the unfolding layer by layer. I no longer see myself as a limited being. I see the limitless nature of my divine makeup. This life I am living is the life energy of God. Every breath I take is filled with the limitless power of spirit. My life is God's life and anything is possible. And so, it is.
And so it is. Amen. Amen. So when we do what we call mind treatment, you see, that's what science of mind calls the mind treatment. We need to start treating our consciousness. When we say treating it like a medical condition, you keep applying these kinds of truths and words to your consciousness daily, several times. So that even when you're unconsciously doing something and you hear a commercial and something says the, you know, being smaller than the problem, thinking is automatically, without you even knowing, you've, you've resonated with that. You've heard that, you've felt that you, you, you are so immersed in this consciousness that you begin to attract and draw to you the things of God naturally, easily. You start admitting and expressing and emerging this greatness within you easily, naturally. So, so we, what we have to do is open ourselves up to God consistently, consistently as a way of being. We can't do it hit or miss anymore. It's got to be a consistent way of being. And when we begin to do that as a regular way of breathing in and breathing out, we're acknowledging God, breathing in. It's not just an unconscious, involuntary action of my body, but a conscious choice that I am making, and I'm aware that I'm breathing in the breath of God, the energy of God, thinking as a metaphysician, taking all this to heart. And when you begin to do that, you will begin to find yourself getting out of the way, and then God having its way. You see, when you can get yourself, this limited sense of self, the finite being, the finite mind, out of the way, then the limitless energy of God, the life of God, begins to have its way in and through and as you. So we've got to give God some room to work. God loves to work, but we're so busy all up in it, in the soup. And you need to do this, and we need to do that, and here are my plans. And God says, I know the plans that I have for you. But we up here, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. these are my goals. I got 10 things here, Lord, I'm going to do this, I'm going to do that. Yeah, there's a time for that. But not before we have given God time to work. Lean not unto your own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. For me, that's a clear and powerful directive. Get out of your way, right? Acknowledge God and then follow his lead. That's a clear directive and that's a path that we can do, right? Ask, acknowledge, and follow. It's quite simple. You see, you can't get to the limitless through limited consciousness. You can't get to the limitless through a limited consciousness. You have to expand your awareness. You must expand your connection to the divine. If you're going to try to lay hold of limited, limitless beliefs. So you've got to, before you can lay hold of limitless beliefs, you've got to let go of limited beliefs and begin to dwell in the realm of possibilities and not just what you think is possible because that's where the trouble lies. What you think is possible and what is possible to God are two different things. So you got to get beyond even what you think is possible but dwell upon what is possible with God because God has no limits, no boundaries, right? No definitions. Whatever we can think of, God is above and beyond even that. You can't even define God. That's how vast and limitless God is. So we've got to expand consciousness. And sometimes it can be as simple as asking. Lean not unto your own understanding. Get you out of the way and ask. It could be as simple as asking and allowing. Asking and allowing. Say asking and allowing. Asking and allowing. Asking God to help you. Asking God to show you the path, show you the way, right? And then allowing. Allowing the guidance to come. And then allowing yourself to follow the guidance. 
See, it's not that we don't get guidance, we don't follow it. So allowing, asking, and then allowing, and then following this guidance that comes. And when you begin to ask, show me, guide me, direct me, lead me, what happens is sometimes I want you to watch out for those limited thoughts that will automatically pop up in your head. Because when you begin to ask and you open yourself up, then what happens is these limited thoughts pop up into your consciousness and they want to begin to analyze everything. They want to question everything. They want to get back into, let me map it all out again, and blah, 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 blah. But you see, analyzing is not allowing. Analyzing is not allowing. You have to begin to know when God is guiding. You've got to be able to feel, and this knowing that I'm talking about is not about you thinking about something. The knowing is something that arises within you. This knowing arises within your consciousness. It's not thinking about, but knowing. A simple, quiet knowing. Because you can't think your way to God. You can only know from within. See, I could tell you about God. You can't think. I can't even describe it. You must know from within. So you make yourself available for this knowing consistently. You make yourself available for the knowing and not with a lot of mental chatter. When I say make yourself available, I'm not saying sitting down and then doing your prayer work. There's a time to do prayer work, but then there's a time for just sitting and abiding in the presence so that you may know you won't have to ask, even before they ask, I have answered. Those are people who know when you sit in that presence. So you allow yourself, not with the constant chatter, but the willingness to abide in this presence, and God then will begin to impress itself upon your heart, impress itself upon your mind through your intuitive nature, through your intuition, and you will begin to know, not think, but know from an inner knowing. Intuition is direct revelation. Intuition is, is direct and divine knowing. And don't stop saying it's a hunch, and it's it ain't no hunch. Intuition has nothing to do with your hunches. That's commercialism. Intuition, true intuition is when you know that you know that you know, and you don't even know how you know, but you know. It's a direct imparting from spirit, right? It's a direct download from spirit. It has nothing to do with I guess and I think and I feel, whatever. That's not how God works. God doesn't have to keep you guessing. Thou, you shall what? Know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Not guess a pattern, not have a hunch about the truth. I think this may be the truth over here. You got to know it, and it will set you, you free. Now, when you start working with your intuitive mind and your intuitive ability to be open and receptive to let God impress upon you. Lean not unto thy own understanding, but let him begin to direct your path. Now sometimes, I want you to know this, it may not seem logical. Right? The guidance you get may not first, that's why the questioning mind wants to come in. Well, this don't seem right. It don't have to seem right to you. So know that sometimes what might happen is, you know, it, it, it might not feel or sound logical, but that's okay because logic belongs to the thinking mind. And I'm not saying that we won't have occasion to use our intellect. There's a point in time in which we use that. There's a process when we're doing that, when we're solving. But at the same time, there's always that, in back of that, there's always that intuitive sense, right? So it, it, it's okay to... To, to have this logical intellectual mind, but not when you're trying to move beyond the limited to the limitless, right? Not when you're in need of a miracle. Not when you're, when you're, when you're trying to do the impossible. You don't need logic for that because logic will take that blessing and move it all the way out, take that miracle and move it far away. So not when you're trying to do those things, not when you are trying to live a fulfilled and extraordinary life. Because for that, you need God. And God is beyond logic. God is everything. So why not commit today to moving beyond the limited to the limitless? 
because I promise if you do, you will enjoy the journey of your life a lot more. There'll be much more grace and much more ease. Dwell beyond the realm of possibilities. See, I have a little phrase that says dwell in possibilities on my table, but I want to dwell beyond the realm of possibilities because I'm dwelling in the presence. And when you dwell in the presence, the presence of God, then all things are what? Possible. Blessings and namaste. <laughs> Blessings. Namaste.